Alrighty guys, welcome back to another one. Here's something a little different for you. I'll be loading on Tyler's press. But we were sitting around the other day and we were shooting some clays and yeah. got, to, got thinking about it anyways. And I don't think I ever showed my favorite clay load when we load about every time we go shooting. So yeah. where do we do that today? It's a real simple load. You'll need any taper at all, really. The Clay Buster Orange Wad. Ounce and an eighth of your shot size of choice. Um, obviously a primer for this one. We're using the, you know, just a straight Winchester 209. And then using the Lee Load All. And I guess we'll get her put together here. We'll start out. We're going to resize this thing. It's already been deprimed, but we don't know if it's been res resized or not. So we'll uh, go ahead and do that real quick. Right. Make sure it got it down all the way. Something I like to do anyways, make sure there's no pellets down inside of that. I'm sure Tyler's mentioned it 10,000 times. In fact, I know he has, but it'll scare you. That's for sure. Yeah, go see the primer too fast. There's a piece of shot in there. I have had one primer go off on me I've just never once. had it so far, knock on wood. Been lucky, but anyways, now that we got it resized and primed, we'll throw it over here on this scale. And the powder we're using today is double A super handicap. We use it's right off the bottle really but 20 grains is all you need for an ounce and an eighth seems to do really well we'll get this wee dipper here excuse a little footsteps fellas i'm real bad to overshoot by a lot when i do this <laughs> and it seems like i'll dump way too much back out and... all right Double check it. Oh, perfect. Take your wad. And you can use your press for this, but I've got an ounce and an eighth of seven and a half shot weighed out already, just to make it a little quicker. Just go ahead and dump it straight in. It should look something like that. That looks a little low, though. Mm. What do you think? No, it's fine. I'm used to the herders. The front station, the point towards you. And you gotta support this one a little bit. I press this one out. Give it a good little bit of pre cramp. Spin it a little bit. Damn, it is wore out. This is the original one though, isn't it? Yeah, had it for four years now. And there you go. We'll go ahead and play with this fancy taper die here. But put a nice taper on it. Or try to, maybe destroy it. Who knows? That's one heck of a taper. I just barely even pulled. Oh, yeah. Ah, well, it's not the prettiest shell in the world. That hall was ugly to start with. Look how toasty it is. Well, that's all right, though. The real challenge is he can't never load these uh, HS halls. Nope. Double A HS without them crushing. So let's see if I can't do one of them. Those halls always crush on my press. Both of them I have, you guys know, but. I don't have a problem out of them though on my herders no. or my load all too. Yeah, I've got another press set up in there in my dresser and it's it's basically brand new and it still crushes them. This will be the same load as the last one. Winchester 209, 20 grains double A. Clay Buster, Orange Wad, I can't remember the nomenclature for it. But. Um, CB0118-12. In an ounce and an eighth of your favorite payload. We've done this same thing with Buckshot, and it done really well. It just seems to be a good overall power charge for this uh, payload weight. Get everything seated with. Here the scale back out. Should be 1.12 on the scale in ounces, anyways. 
but I also know that it should just fill the shot cup up perfectly. So we'll go ahead and do that and see how close we get. Oh, this morning, 1.0. If I gave it the rest of the dipper, it'd have been perfect. But yep. I chickened out. Ah well, anyways. Moment of truth here. Let's see if this thing crushes. Ew! Why does it do that? You had a point towards you. I had a crease towards me. Oh well, it didn't crush left so far. So I mean, I'm still winning. It's just the ugliest sin. Give her that. And honestly, on my load all, I don't even run this top hopper, no spring or nothing. It's just, it's just really all about feel, but, eh. Okay, it needs a little more. Ooh. Okay, I can get behind that. If I get that one corner, that one panel of the crimp to tuck in. I think these hauls just need a lot of finesse because that ain't, I mean, excuse a little bit of ugliness, but it's, See, this press never wants to fully seat the uh, the crimp, like, you know, the original double A's. It just can't push it down far enough. And I do have a quarter inch or eighth inch trimmed off the uh, final crimp tube. That's smart right there. How recessed you on it? About like that. All right, now let's take it back over here and we'll doll back up the edges. This is really finicky though. <laughs> I see why you don't prefer loading these. But, like I said, other than that one ugly fold there, that ain't too bad. It ain't got to be pretty. Well, no, I guarantee you that'll dust the clay. We've shot, I don't know, when I first got my press, I sat down and loaded like 120 of these, and we sit there and shot clays all day long, never had a dud, and they'd absolutely disintegrate them. Yeah. So then we done buckshot loads with them. So there they are. The original AA and then the HS. Yeah. What do you think? Is that something out of the ordinary, see me loading on his press? All right, guys, I'm gonna load one of these. If Josh zooms in here, you can see how ugly this hole is. It's an original AA. But it is just black and crispy. I don't know how many times it's been fired, but it's about to go again. Go ahead and resize it. Press is a little bit low. I usually have it up on my dresser, as you guys know. But again, Winchester primer. We've shot a whole bunch of these. Let's see, oh, there's the powder right there. I couldn't find the powder. Dipper. Again, 20 grains of double A super handicap. There we go. Double check it as always. Yep. We can go back on later. Anyway, uh, clay buster orange wood. And one and one eighth ounce of whatever size lead shot you want. It can be buckshot if you want it to be buckshot. Ounce and an eighth is 492 grains. You always got to spill some. Yep, you got you to pay your homage. Homage. You got to sacrifice some. 529 grains is not ounce and an eighth. 493 is an ounce and an eighth. You're close enough to it. Nobody saw what I just did there. And we have a really good looking shell. This hull was disgusting, black, crispy, toasty, but it still loads just fine. I'm gonna drag some out of my collection and show you all toasty. <laughs> my herders, it's it's like a pre-mech. This one's mech, once fired. anyways, but. You can set it up. I can absolutely finesse some crimps, or crimps ripped and everything else on it, and they still load just like a brand new haul. You'd never know it until you fired it. Yep. It's actually pretty cool, but at the same time, it's a, it's a it's a pain. The Herders Model Six Press was, I believe, made by Texan, which was Mech before they were Mech. It's actually a really good press, but yeah, this hole is once fired. It still has the original primer and all. Yeah. I don't know how old it is. I think this one specifically is from the 70s. It has a the band on it. Yeah, a ring on the brass. 
old hall. Alrighty guys, here's something kind of cool for you. One of the trailers that goes to church with our wives had this old firearm here. It's a Marlin Model 17S. It was made in, we believe 1904 is the last patent date on it, but up to 1906 is possible. We believe it's two and five eighth inch chambered. Hence why he was having trouble with the shells coming out of the chamber after he fired them, being there two and three quarters. But anyways, it's a pretty cool old firearm. It's in great condition, really. I mean, yeah. it's the finish has turned brown on it, but the majority of the finish is there. And like you'd expect on a lot of these old guns here, you know, all the hard edges on it have been more smooth. And you, you can see where the old failure's hand, you know, right across it. Or oh, it's just cool. I like them. Hey, it's got a name carved into the stock. Does it? Yeah, it's got some carved into it right here. Oh. It's more than just random scratches. You know scratches. what I think that is? That might be how many uh, squirrels or whatever he that shot That is with tally it. marks. Yeah, is what that marks. is. It's got one, two, three, four, five. There's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's ten on right there anyways. Is that ten turkeys? Ten squirrels? I wouldn't think it'd be squirrels. There'd be a lot more than that. That might be 10 turkeys or maybe 10 deer. I'd say it's either turkey or deer. I know there's a guy in Buck and Slug who has a uh, handy rifle in 44 Magnum and he yeah. keeps the forend right here tallied with how many deers he's got with right. it. Right, I've got a buddy that hand pours a lot of baits and stuff like that. And he's got a Stevens 301 20 gauge wood furniture. And it's got notches down right here on it for every turkey he's killed with it for the last four or five years that he's had it. He started doing that, so. That's kind of cool. I just noticed that in the light there, you can see it. Cause it's not real deep. I mean, looking at it flat, you couldn't ever see it, but you can see it in the finish. I, I hadn't seen it before. That's pretty cool. I like the old guns like that though. Yep. Stuff I've, like that. I've got the gun here because the ejector is broken. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, right here. It's missing half the ejector and the sear is missing its spring. So it, right now you can shoot it, but I don't think the hammer would stay back all the time. Right. We haven't had issues with it yet, but it will not kick the haul out. Here's a cool thing about these old guns. It's kind of like the 336 lever guns. It's a Marlin, so of course, half cock. Hammer won't push off, but say you go bang, you rack another one in. All right, well then you just go and let the hammer down, you know what I mean? Guess what? You forgot to put it on half cock. Now it goes off. It rests, I don't know if you can see it moving back there or not. That big silver lug moving there, that's your firing <laughs> pin. Yep. All it takes is, oh no, well, I got half caught. One second. I caught something walking through the brush, caught a briar. Now, will it go off every time? Maybe not. But is our, is it, could it? Yes, very likely. So, that's one of the things about them. Half caught guns. That's how my lever gun is, too, though. It's, you can go all the way down or, you know, carry it on half caught. Cool firearm. It's cool. Reminds me of the Winchester 1897s. I like the stuff like this about it. About the old firearms. They've got the metal grommets in around the screws where they go through the wooden pump handle to keep it from splitting out, you know, as it racks and twists like it has down here. You can see a hairline crack running through the pump on it. Yep. But it ain't split around the screws. They've got the ferrules or whatever. That might be what they're called, ferrules. I don't know. They got the sports around them anyway. It's just stuff like that you don't see anymore. Barrels, yeah, you're right. <laughs> cool old firearm. It is cool. 12 gauge if you didn't mention that. Oh, yeah. I like the fawn on it too, though. I don't know how well you can see that on video. You can see it clear there. as day. It's first patent dates on it. It's from 1889, or April 2nd, 1889. So if you can get it there, y'all can pause it and read it. But I'll read it out to you. It says the Marlins Firearms Company, New Havens, Connecticut, USA. Patent applied for April 2nd. No, patent not applied for. Patented April 2nd, 1889. September 11th, 1894. November 6th, 1894. November 27th, 1900. And November 29th, 1904. And they quit making this right here in 1906. 08. Oh, 08, oh, my bad. The 17S specifically. Only about a thousand were made and they were produced for two years, 1906, I guess three years, 1907 and 1908. That's a cool little firearm though. Yep. It can fire out of battery, so this little button here is supposed to show you when it's out of battery. Something like that. Ish. <laughs> <laughs> I 
it's one of them things. I'm sure it worked great a hundred years ago. If you guys want to know more about it, I'm sure Forgotten Weapons has a video on these. Guarantee it. But thanks for watching, y'all. Yep, we'll be shooting this uh, maybe this weekend. I don't know. Yep. Hope y'all have a good one.